This is where I live. This is my home office. And uh, I work from home on a couple of different things. I write a blog, not that often anymore. <laughs> I, I uh, write an, an iPhone app called Overcast. And I have a podcast called the Accidental Tech Podcast. And I do all that from here. I think almost everybody would mention three things that I haven't been working on for quite some time, which would be uh, that I, I was uh, the kind of maybe co-founder, if not first employee, of Tumblr, and then I made Instapaper, and after that I made the magazine, none of which I am involved with anymore. <laughs> My main job was to make it work and to make it fast for its first four years or so. I contributed little minor feature things here and there, I might have been responsible for its GIF support, or GIF, depending on who you ask. But for the most part, David, David Karp, the founder, he was the idea guy, and he was the front-end designer, and he would, he is also a programmer, so he would do like a lot of the front-end programming, and I was doing like the back-end stuff, making the servers work, making things fast, optimizing things, database stuff, you know, the, like the kind of hardcore programming stuff, that was my job. I was like the stage crew of Tumblr, you know, like the, the, making things work, but no one really notices my job. I look back on it kind of the way I look back on college. It's like, it's something, it's a thing I did, I had a good time doing it, but now it's, I mean, I left there uh, five years ago now, and it was such like a whirlwind of craziness of just this thing that was growing incredibly and we had to be keeping up with it and I had to be, you know, trying to make the site scale and everything and it was so much stress, so much work. I enjoyed it, I, I, I do look back on it fondly, but it's also, I feel like I've like moved past the stage of my life where I can do things like that ever again. <laughs> and yeah, I, I definitely only want to look back on it. I did occasionally want to be like the, the guy who was in the spotlight being recognized as like the celebrity of the site, but not most of the time. Most of the time I was very happy being just the person who made things work very well because that was very challenging. The company was growing like crazy and we had kept the staff really, really small, too small for too long. And it was about to explode into what, like my job was about to become a whole department of lots of people. And I neither wanted to manage such a department, nor would I be qualified to, because I have no management experience. Uh, so I would neither be qualified to manage so many people, nor would I want to work under someone else managing him. So, so that's when I decided, you know what? And David and I both were like, yeah, this is a good time. Let's, let's leave while, while, while we're still happy with each other and our jobs. So we left on great terms. And uh, yeah, I still talk to David today and we're, everything's great. And do you, do you follow Tumblr much? Like, like, do you use Tumblr? I don't really use it much. I'm, like, I'll, I, will, I still have my account and I still have the app on my phone. And I, I will jump in from time to time to just browse and see, you know, see some things if, I want to, if I'm you know, looking for something to read or browse or you know, just waste some time with. But I don't really publish there anymore um, because my, like, most of my geek community uses Twitter as the primary place where they gather. Um, so it's, it's kind of just like not where my friends are anymore. Well, one of the reasons why, why I decided to leave when I did was that I had already built Instapaper and it was already doing pretty well and it could support me full time at that point. And I knew that if I, if I took it over as my full time job, then I could make it even better and I, and I could, you know, I could make it, you know, I could make it a thing, the thing I did and I could work for myself and work from home, which I had never been able to do before. I had never even considered the possibility and now I had this great opportunity to take this thing I was doing at night in my free time, which was dwindling, <laughs> uh, to do this thing at night, uh, you know, to take that full time was incredibly exciting and satisfying. So I went right into doing that full time. What level of enjoyment do you get from that kind of constant refinement and iteration and improvement and fixing things as, as everything changes versus creating something brand new? Is one more enjoyable than the other? They're, diff they're different satisfactions. You know, like, I think you, you need a healthy balance of both to be happy as a programmer. Uh, a lot of programmers only love the creating new things part, um, and that, that can be challenging when then you're tasked with some boring task, because even when you're creating something new, there's like 10% of it that's actually that new exciting part, and then the other 90% of it is all the boring stuff you have to do to make that into something that you can use or sell or release. Uh, so, it, uh, I, I feel like you have to kind of develop an appreciation for both. And really, they both are satisfying in different ways. Like, I love being able to go in and delete old code that is no longer necessary because some, some change happened, you know, Apple added some new thing, so then I don't need to do my own version of it anymore. So I can go and delete a bunch of code. I love that. It feels like you're cleaning, like spring cleaning. You know, it feels, it feels like you're getting lighter. There's less stuff you have to maintain and worry about. 
So really both can be satisfying. Where is that tipping point? When do you let go? When do you let Instapaper go? When do you let the magazine go? When do you let any project go? Sometimes it's forced upon me. You know, like, like the magazine didn't really work out. It wasn't, it was not doing well under my stewardship. So I sold it uh, to somebody who wanted to work on it. Instapaper was somewhat similar. It was doing well still, but I was no longer able to give it the amount of time and attention it needed. And so I, you know, I decided to move on to new things and to, to sell or shut down my old things when, in short, I no longer want to work on them, or I no longer can work on them. That, that, can, that can occur if it fails, that can occur if the market changes, that can occur if my, if my personal situation changes, if I have more or less time to devote to certain things, or if I just have a really awesome idea of something else I want to do instead. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. Most of my ideas are terrible. Uh, and I, I can recognize that early on, that, you know what, this idea that I thought was really cool, that, I should not do that. Because even the things that I released that have been terrible, you haven't seen the other hundred ideas I had that were way worse than those. You've got a job that I think would appeal to a lot of people. Why have you been able to get away with this? It's such a cool thing. I think it's a combination. I mean, certainly there has been some luck along the way. I'm not going to deny that. Um, but it's also a combination of just being in the right place at the right time. Like, I was a little too young. I, I graduated from college in 2004. So I missed, like, the first web.com wave. Uh, and if you were in that at all, you had a pretty good chance of being good at something or, or winning or being success, su successful at something. You know, you, you had a pretty good chance. Uh, whereas if, you know, so if, if I was in iOS apps at the very beginning, which I was, you know, in 2007, the very, that was the first iPhone, and then the App Store opened in 2008, I was making apps on day one in the App Store. I, Instapaper 1.0 was in the store right then at the beginning. And I've been making apps now as long as somebody could make iPhone apps. And so timing, you know, just being, being in the market when it's taking off is a huge advantage. Um, and then beyond that, it's just, I just keep doing it. I mean, I've been trying to build an audience uh, for over a decade. I've been, I've been blogging for over a decade. Now, you know, I've been making apps for, what, seven years or whatever it is. Um, so it's really, it's a combination of those things, you know. Some of it's luck, some of it is, being in the right place at the right time, and some of it is just a long span of hard work. I started blogging in like 2002 or something. I mean, not, not well, <laughs> at all. Uh, but uh, but I, I, you know, I, I've been writing for a long time like that. I started blogging more seriously in about 2006, 2007, uh, and just been doing it since then. And that has evolved with the apps. Like when the apps came out, no one looked at my blog. My blog had no audience. I wasn't even on Twitter. Uh, Twitter didn't actually exist yet, I don't think. Um, or it just barely. And, uh, and so everything has kind of grown together. It helps to have all those things because then like people who, who find my blog are then more likely to get my apps. People who know my apps first are more likely to read my blog. Now I have a podcast and the podcast is, is getting popular in part because I started it after I built the, these audiences and in part because again, the same effect. I have people who download the app might be interested in my podcast because they like the app. People who like the podcast will go buy the app. So it's, it's this nice, I hate to say synergy, I'm sorry, but it really is kind of the synergy of, of these um, reciprocating forces that really do help that, you know, if you build them up together, and again, this all takes time. I mean, I've been podcasting for five years. I've been blogging for 10, at least, something like that. Uh, I've been making apps, as I said, for, you know, seven or whatever. Uh, so it just takes a long time to build up these things for most people. But that is kind of part of the fun of it, you know, it's, it's, the whole step along, every step along the way, every time I would get like, wow, I just made a post that got 5,000 views, like every step along the way. Then, oh, next time I do a big post, it gets 10,000. Like every one of those has been exciting and awesome and something I never thought possible beforehand. And that's on a screen called nitpicky details. Every time I do things like this, I think it's a risk and I think maybe it'll turn off some people. When you press the button and every again, time it's it the opposite effect. around the character. <laughs> So now he's back to his original facing direction. 